We want to say good morning to everyone and thank you all for joining us for this morning's uh, daily word devotion. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and as always we're uh, glad to come to you in the name of the Lord to discuss those things that uh, God has laid on our hearts. Amen. Uh, we're grateful uh, to the Lord for this opportunity and we're also grateful for those that are uh, listening in live and also those that are uh, watching this recording on YouTube. Uh, we pray that uh, things are being said that are blessing you and of course the purpose is to get you started uh, on a daily uh, routine of hearing God's Word at the beginning of your day so that as you uh, go through your day God's Word is there, it's planted there and uh, it will bring forth fruit throughout the day. Amen. All right, this morning, I uh, feel led to come from the 11th chapter of the book of Luke, and we're going to start reading at verse 11. It says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, what is the Lord establishing there? Uh, first of all, he's telling this parable of a person who um, has a friend that comes over as company, of course. And at that time, whenever you had company, uh, just like it is today, today, uh, it is uh, your job to show hospitality and things like that. And so uh, this friend is asking another friend of his, um, I guess his next door neighbor, uh, for some bread so that he can feed uh, his, his other friend. Now, one thing I want to uh, point out here is that this is for the also not only for the benefit of the friend who's asking, but it is also for someone else. And one thing we should keep in mind whenever we are going before the Lord, uh, we should ask the Lord, is this for someone else as well? In other words, we should ask ourselves, is this for someone else as well? In other words, what is the uh, purpose of this thing that I'm asking the Lord for? You know, the Bible tells us in the book of James that we have not because we ask not. You know, now we, we can stop right there and go on from there. You see that we have not because we ask not. And, you know, sometimes... Um, we want these things, whatever they may be, and we don't have them because we're not asking for them. But yet and still we walk around um, as, as upset with God because maybe we think he's supposed to read our mind or maybe we think we're just supposed to get whatever it is that we have in our hearts that, uh, that we want. You know, even though God knows all things, you see, even though he knows all things, he knows what we want and what we need before we ask uh, him. Uh, the Bible st still instructs us that we're supposed to ask. You see that? Uh, it's like a child that wants something from his parents. Maybe he wants dessert or maybe he wants a new toy or whatever the case may be. Uh, and that parent might know that that child wants this or that, but it's still up to that child to ask. Now, a lot of that is uh, like if a child goes throughout the day not asking for what he's want, uh, maybe it's because he doesn't have confidence that he'll receive uh, what it is that he's want, wanting. So he just don't bother to ask. If if he's made up in his mind, there's no use in me asking for that because I'm not going to get it. Well, you know, uh, nine times out of ten, he might not get it. Why? Because he hasn't asked for it. You see that? And so, and that's the way it is a lot of times with Christians. There are things that we want. But we don't necessarily bring it to God because we just assume uh, God is going to say no. Or we just assume maybe we're basing off of basing it off of 
uh, past experiences where we've asked for something and God has said no or uh, not yet or whatever the case may be. And because of that, uh, we can um, bring that into the future where we, we're desiring something, but because of our past experiences, we just don't ask for it, you see. And so uh, the Lord is telling us that we're supposed to ask. Now, what is it going to hurt to ask? And a lot of times we don't want to be uh, turned down. You know, one thing we hate is rejection. And we, if we're not careful, we'll, we will think that God saying no to us is rejection. Now, when God is saying no uh, to us for a particular thing that we're asking for, it's not rejection. Because most of the time, if God is saying no, then what is something that's not good for us to begin with? Or he has something better in store for us. So it's not just flat out rejection. It's just that God is going to do things his way. And he, and he already has a plan for us. And he doesn't intend for us to get out of his will in any kind of way, you know, through those things that we're asking for. And so this person here in this parable, they have uh, knocked on their neighbor's door and they're asking for bread. You see, and so this man who who has been asked, he's going over in his mind and rehearsing uh, to the person uh, the I guess the um, inconvenience. You know that he's already asleep, his children are in bed, and everything is quiet. You know, but it says because of his importunity, everybody see that. And the first part of that verse says, though he will not rise and and give him. Because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. You see that? So in other words, number one, because he's his friend. Now, that's one thing we have to know for sure when we go to the Lord, you know, is we have to understand what our relationship is with him. Now, we can be friends of God. You see, we can be friends of God. And, I, and I'm certain that uh, a lot of us. We don't ask God uh, for what it is that we want or what it is that we need because we know maybe the relationship isn't where it should be. You know, in that same book, in the book of James, it tells us, it says, you have not because you ask not. You, and, you, you, uh, and, and of course, when you do ask, you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. In other words, the thing that you're asking for, your motives are not right towards it, you see. And so a lot of times people don't ask, it's even believers don't ask because they know that whatever it is, is for wrong reasons. You know, you can ask God for a husband or a wife, but then you have to ask yourself, why do I want a husband or a wife? Is it to glorify God in my marriage and allow that, that husband or wife, you know, to compliment me and to help me to grow in the Lord and, you know, our marriage glorify God or is it? For the wrong reason. Is it just to be so that I'm not lonely? You know, God cures loneliness, not a spouse. God doesn't, you know, God cures that loneliness, not the spouse. You see, God pays your bills, not the spouse. God looks after the children, not the spouse. You see, and so we have to be, be careful that we're not uh, asking God things for the wrong reason. And, and, you know, sometimes God won't just flat out say no. He'll just say wait or he'll just wait to before he blesses you. Why? Because it could be God's will for him to give you the desire of your heart and to give you what you want. But until you check your motive and, and get that right with the Lord, until you uh, are willing to look at whatever it is that you're asking for in the right light, in the in the way that God wants you to see it, he, it, it won't do him any good to bless you with it. And it won't do you any good either. You see that uh, many people, again, they want a spouse because uh, it, it's, it's for their own companionship. Uh, but God don't want to bless you with someone, somebody that uh, he feel like is going to end up taking his place in your life. So loneliness is not a reason to have a spouse. Wanting children, you know, and wanting just to be married, just to say that you're married. That's not a reason for God. God brought husband and wife together for the purpose of glorifying him to produce righteous children to glorify him you see that that's the purpose of marriage it's a it's a, a um carbon copy of uh god's relationship but with, with man jesus christ purchasing his bride you see and that's what that's the purpose of marriage and so if you're looking at marriage uh looking at something in the wrong light you won't use you won't use it to glorify god 
It's just for your own purpose. And that's not uh, God's will. As you can see, this friend in this story uh, is asking for bread, not to feed himself, but to feed uh, the person, the visitor that have come. You see that? And so with things that we ask for, it's not that God doesn't want us asking for things that will benefit us, but we should also be thinking about how it's going to benefit others. You see that? All right. All right. So Jesus said in his word, in verse 9 of the 11th chapter of Luke, it says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Verse 11. If a son ask, shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, who shall give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he, if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You see that? And so what, what is that telling us? If us, now this is what the Lord is telling us. We don't, people don't have to be saved to want the best for their children. People don't have to be saved. And so if we as individuals who are not like God in that manner, you know, may not be born saved, never were born saved and you know, not knowing God from the jump, you know, but having children, if we know how to give good gifts to our own children, how much more so would God not give good gifts to those, you see, who, who ask, you see that? And so this is saying that we should ask. And if we understand our love towards our own children, even when we're evil, evil people know how to love their own children. You see that? And so so, you know, if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our own children, how much more so will God give good gifts and the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? And now that's one thing that we have to know. And we should think of God in that light. God loves us more than we love our own children. And you know what? And just like sometimes we've denied our own children things because we knew that it wasn't good for them when they asked. Sometimes God will do the same thing. But it does not mean that God is just flat out rejecting us. It just means that he has something better for us. A child may ask, can I go in the street and, and bounce the basketball? And you may know, no, it's not wise to go in that street and bounce basketballs because cars drive in the street. But you know what? You can do it in a driveway. So it's not flat out rejection. It's just there's another way to do it, you know. And, and that's the way it is with God. The Bible tells us, you know, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. So you can receive what God has for you. Now, that's the point there. Now, another thing you should pray for is God's perfect will. Whenever you uh, are praying and asking for him for something, pray concerning God's perfect will for your life. And you have to be willing to accept that will when you pray for it. Amen. Let us close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word that you spoke to us. We thank you, Lord, for breaking this word down for us and helping us to understand it. Lord, we ask that as we go through this day, that you will help us to remember this word, and that you will bring it up into our spirit, Lord, and let us speak it uh, during the day when we have opportunity. We thank you so much for speaking to us clearly. And Lord, we ask that this word be tucked into our hearts and not let us forget it, Lord, but to meditate on it so we can bring forth fruit in our everyday lives. Help us, Lord, to apply it in situations, Lord, and help us to remember it when the situations arise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. We pray that this was a blessing to you. And uh, we look forward to sharing God's daily word with you on a daily basis. Have a blessed day.